Well, hello. This is currently the title that I am reading. Arthur C. Clarke's 3001, The Final Odyssey. I just literally started on the first couple of pages of this one, though. I have read the rest of the series. So, for this, I have this as well. I think this is just about how they made everything. The ultimate log of the ultimate trip. So I wonder if it's the actual log book for David Bowman's trip in space. I got... I opened this part, but that's all I saw. So I don't know what it is yet. But it's um four or five books. It's like a sci-fi bundle. Sort of tea. Um, sci-fi. There was like mystery, romance, fantasy. I like fantasy as well. However, I've been on a sci-fi kick for the past few years. I used to be way big into horror, too. Anne Rice and Stephen King, Darren Shan, were my jam. So I'm looking at you, not looking at the book. I'm trying to slowly remove this plastic. I'm going to look at the title. The Crackles of Scar. The cover totally looks like it 80s fantasy novel by Ron Sarti Child, a beggar, a thief, a prince, the last hope of a shattered America Oh it Looks highly intriguing Look at that The world is not as it, it was. Centuries ago, the cataclysm transformed a place once known as America, spawning a biological nightmare that destroyed great societies, created mutants and monsters, and set dangerous beasts free to roam a wretched land. A seven-year-old gutter rat, Arn, lives by his wits in the dank and merciless city until chance reveals him to be the king of Kinesis, Kinesis long-lost bastard son the second in line to occupy the throne, but treachery runs rampant throughout the realm. Threatening new and devastating horrors, and destiny has chosen a most likely champion to come to his nation's aid. A child of squalor with no taste for battle or kingship, a reluctant boy prince they call Scar. The Chronicles of Scar. Next. Novel. Ooh. I wonder if they mix the fantasy and sci fi bundles together. I really like how that looks. Black Sun Rising. Sci fi and fantasy ain't that too far off, honestly. It's just basically the same thing, different principles, both believe in magic. And just differently. The power of the Fae? Oh shit, it's got fairies. Over a millennium ago, Erna, a seismically active yet beautiful world, was settled by colonists from far distant Earth, but the seemingly habitable planet was fraught with perils no one could have foretold, and the colonists found themselves caught in a desperate battle for survival against the Fae. Terrifying natural force with the power to prey upon the human mind itself, drawing forth a person's worst nightmare, images or most treasured dreams, and indiscriminately giving them life. That's only like the half of that, but this seems like a post-apocalyptic America kind of thing going on. This is like magic and got colonists, so like, eh. Okay, second part. Twelve centuries after fate first stranded the colonists on Erna, mankind has achieved an uneasy stalemate 
and human sorcerers manipulate the Fae for their own profit. Little realizing that demonic forces which feed upon such efforts are rapidly gaining in strength. Now as the hordes of the Dark Fae multiply, four people, priest, adept, apprentice, and sorcerer, are about to be drawn inexorably together for a mission which will force them to confront an evil beyond their imagining in a conflict which will put not only their own lives but the very fate of humankind in jeopardy. The cover art is by Michael Whalen, by the way. I think that is very important to add on there because that cover art, I don't know if you guys can get So hard to read on that screen. These old books on my old laptop. That's dope, man. Dope. Oh, I just looked at that. The Demon King. Chris Buck. Stirring. An epic tale of battles and flames. Love returned and love betrayed. Author of the Sea Seer King. So. Whoop. The Demon King. Oh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that at all. It's all gold and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. From the best-selling co-author of An the Anteros Trilogy comes an epic panorama of spectacle, intrigue, and passion, the thrilling new saga of the Demon King. Ten years ago, General Damastus pledged eternal loyalty to the wizard Tenedos and his vision of a unified, peaceful Numantia. Tenedos became emperor, but peace never came for the violent suppression of peasant revolts and the la slaughter of outlaw sorcerers soon stained the seer king's reign with blood. Now Tenedos has gathered an army of millions for war against a kingdom far larger and more powerful than Numantia. And when Damastus tries to stop the apocalypse, he will uncover dark, horrifying secrets about the man he sworn to serve. The bargain the seer king made to gain an empire, empire and the price yet to be paid. <laughs> the empire and the price yet to be paid. Apologies. The battle scenes are extraordinary, the sorcery is sinister, and everything you could fear. It's from explorations and entertaining new saga. So they sent me the second book in the series. Yeah. So I wonder if you could read it without actually having read the Seer King. Hmm. Ooh, this looks like it's got a promising. This looks fancy. The Hidden Stars, a rich and assured novel of high fantasy and adventure. It's written by Kate Elliott. Book one of the Rune of Unmaking. Yes, give me the book one if you're going to give me a mystery bag. Give me the first book in the series, please. This book is by Madeline Howard. Woman author. Hell yes. Hey, look at that kraken. It's called The Hidden Stars. I'm assuming that's a kraken. It's a water beast. The very impressive debut of a highly skilled writer. An engrossing story with well-realized characters. I particularly loved her narrative voice. The warm, magical voice of a storyteller in some ancient village drawing the reader into a full tale full of secrets and marvels. Catherine Kerr. More than a century ago, the cataclysmic struggle between the wizards and the mages ended in their mutual destruction, leveling great cities and reducing grand palaces to dust. From the vast graveyard that remained, the Empress Oriana 
rose up to proclaim herself the divine incarnation of the devouring moon, ruling her wasted realm with the blackest sorcery, turning her priests from men to monsters, and setting them loose to enslave or destroy all who would oppose her. But now signs and portents hint of a champion, a young girl, hidden and talented, who is destined to end Oriana's terrible reign. And now a brave band of heroes must locate their savior princess, even if it means being pursued to the ends of the world by the withering fury, fury of the dark goddess herself. All right, last one. Yes, yes, more fantasy novels in the sci-fi fantasy bag. I wanted to have sci-fi books from. So by Christine Catherine Roosh is the Black Queen, book one of Black Throne. That's a nice picture. Another 80s kind of look. From one of the most acclaimed creators of fantasy fiction comes the epic tale of the Black Throne, a stirring saga of tumultuous conflicts set in a magical world in a powerful family, and in the tortured, divided mind of its monarch, the Black Queen. More Fays. The Fey Empire has been at peace for 15 years, but Queen Ariana, who holds the Black Throne, has become increasingly troubled by a mysterious presence that is waking in her mind. It is a force of ruthless power, determined to seize the throne even if it means destroying Ariana's very essence in the process. And when the queen's body is not her own, it spells trouble for a warlike empire already beginning to shape under the strictures of peace. That's true. Worse, it seems that the only person who can help Ariana is her brother, Gift, the legitimate heir to the Black Throne, and the one the throne itself has chosen as ruler. To refuse its summoning could bring disaster, but to accept it could be more dire still. So while his sister is locked in a battle to save her very soul, Gift must use his incomplete knowledge of magic in a desperate fight to discover a solution. At stake is the fate of the entire world, which stands poised on the brink of unimaginable chaos. Well, there's a lot of cataclysmic events. Um, I'm looking forward to the Chronicles of Scar and the Black Sun Rising. The Hidden Stars and the Black Queen might be pretty good because there's a lot of male authors that I've read throughout my life. I'm going to put these to the side. And I specifically asked for this book because I have the other in the series. I don't, didn't have this one. Yeah, the Garden of Rama. Because I, when I began a series, I have to read every book in the series. Not every library has all the books that I want, because usually sci-fi is a little... Uh, no, not a lot of people read it, sadly. And Arthur C. Clarke is so... Sometimes it's... I don't know. It's difficult to find. Like this one. Tales from planet Earth. I would never find that in the library. Nowhere that I'm from. And it's just a bunch of short stories that he's written. And Isaac Asimov actually wrote a preface for it. It's wonderful. I actually want to read Isaac Asimov. I've heard some a couple of his stories on like YouTube, like the pre-recordings. Hi, 
these aren't specifically sci-fi, but they are science related. I love Carl Sagan. The Demon Haunted World. Science as a candle in the dark. I think this is like the most important thing right now is science, especially in the times that we are going through. How can we make intelligent decisions about our increasingly technology-driven lives if we don't understand the difference between the myths of pseudoscience, new age thinking, and fundamentalist zealotry, and the testable hypothesis of science? Casting a wide net through history and culture, Sagan examines and authoritatively debunks such celebrated fallacies as witchcraft, faith healings, demons, and UFOs. And yet disturbingly in today's so-called information age, pseudoscience is burgeoning with stories of alien abduction, channeling past lives, and communal hallucinations commanding growing attention and respect. As Sanka demonstrates with lucid eloquence, the siren song of unreason is not just a cultural wrong turn, but a dangerous plunge into darkness that threatens our most basic freedoms. Yes. For a society that relies on science so much, we don't know a whole lot about science. And this one's Carl Sagan and Ryan. I already ha had uh, this book in the Tales from Distant Earth. They're just some of the books that I'm going to get on to at some point in the next month. Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors, so search for who we are. They got married at some point. It's them together. So cute. It's just a culmination of where we are and who we are going to be. Sad and stuff. 